Okay, we're going to do another hypothesis test. This time I'm going to go through it a little bit quicker than the last one. In a study of 777 randomly selected medical malpractice lawsuits, it was found that 474 of them were dropped or dismissed. Use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that most of the medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped or dismissed. Okay, before we do the test, uh, the hypothesis test, let's figure out our null hypothesis and our alternate hypothesis. First off, we need to ask ourselves, is this a proportion, a mean, or a standard deviation that we're doing the test on? You're either rejected or you're not rejected here with your malpractice lawsuit. And so that means that we're looking at the percent of malpractice lawsuits that were thrown out of court. And so that means we're looking at a proportion here. So it's P equals will be our null hypothesis. Now, the question is, we're testing the claim that most of the medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped. That's the claim. So what that means is we need to have our null hypothesis be that P is equal to 0 0.50. That's the dividing line between most or not most. Our claim is that most of them are dropped, and so that means our alternative hypothesis will be that most of them are dropped. So this time it's a one-tail test because of the greater than sign. So null hypothesis is equals 0.50. Alternate hypothesis is that most of them are rejected. Okay, we're doing an alpha level of 0.01. And so let's figure out which one is the test we should use. I'm conducting a hypothesis test. We're testing a claim or comparing a sample to a population. And we're doing a proportion. So here's your formula right here that you're going to use. So I'm going to write the formula over here. It's Z is equal to P hat minus P divided by the square root of P Q over N. So we need P hat, P, Q, and N. Notice I always like to write down all of the values before we do the formula, before we do the test. So here we go. In this case, p hat is uh, we get by actually doing the math. So 474 divided by 777 is going to be p hat. So I grab my calculator, 474 divided by 777. So we get 0 0.61003. Okay, so 0 0.61003. So that is our p hat. p comes from the null hypothesis, which is 0 0.50. And remember that q is equal to 1 minus p, not 1 minus p hat. 1 minus p, so that means it's also going to be 0 0.50. p and q should always add up to 1. n is our sample size, 777. OK, before we plug all of these in, let's do a logic test. Looks to me like 0.61 is a lot bigger than 0.50. So maybe that's, I don't know yet because we haven't done the test, but it seems like it could be possible that we reject the null hypothesis. 50-50 though is a lot of variation, so we'll just have to see. Before we go on, let's find the critical value. This is the value we have to beat in order to um, reject the null hypothesis. So it's a Z statistic, so I look at my Z table. This time it's a one-tail test because of the greater than sign, and we're using a 0.01 significance level. So one-tail test, alpha is 0.01, 2.326 is my critical value. So one-tail, 99%, 2.326. That's the number to beat with this formula. So let's actually find our uh, test statistic. 0 0.61003 minus 0 0.50 divided by the square root of 0 0.50 times 0 0.50 divided by 777, with all of that being in the square root. 0 0.61003 minus 0 0.50 
divided by the notice I hit enter first before I do anything else. I want to do the entire numerator divided by the entire denominator. Divided by the square root of 0.50 times 0.50 divided by 777 with the square root over the entire thing. Wow, we get a big test statistic. Remember that it's kind of like standard deviation and six is humongous. That's a very, very big test statistic. So you see how that's much bigger than our critical value. So the test statistic was larger, or the absolute value of the test statistic, which we didn't need in this case because it was positive, was definitely larger than the critical value. That screams we are rejecting the null hypothesis. So what that means is when we find the p-value, the p-value should be smaller than 0.01 when we use technology to find the p-value. Unfortunate, oh, I'm sorry, it should actually, yeah, 6.13. The book wanted you to round to two decimal places, so the book was looking for 6.13, which is fine. Okay, let's use technology to find the p-value. So give me one second to refresh the page. I'm going to go back to the website where we find the p-value. And let's just refresh this. The internet's a little slow because everybody's on it right now. Okay, that's going too slow. I'm going to click back. There we go. Okay, that's better. I, I recommend you click back, and so that way you can get back here. So we'll clear all of this out. Okay, null hypothesis is always equal to. This time, our alternate hypothesis was that we were greater than, and the question was, are we greater than 0.50? Sample size was 777. The number of favorable cases was 474. So I actually type in the number of cases on this calculator. The calculator will do the division for us. And our significance level was 0.01. That's all you got to do, and then you just click Solve and it thinks about it for a minute. Remember, we know that the p-value is gonna have to be smaller than 0.01 because our test statistic was so much larger than the critical value. So we know that it's gonna be, the p-value will be smaller than 0.01. So let's scroll down and find it. Wow, they even say that the p-value is zero. It's so unlikely that it's not even on the bell curve. It's not really equal to zero, it's just so close to zero that the computer can't tell the difference. So it's probably something like 0.00000001 or something. So, but it's okay, it's effectively zero. It means that there's no way we got this result if the answer was equal to 0.50. So it is okay when you're doing this, when you're typing it into the homework, it is okay. They want me to round the p-value to four decimal places. It is okay to put 0 0.0000. That is acceptable. Um, and so when you're doing this and they said that the answer was zero, it is okay to put 0 0.0000. Even though we know that that's not true, that somewhere down here there's a one eventually after a bunch more zeros, but that's okay. So let's answer these two questions. We are definitely rejecting this null hypothesis because the p-value is less than alpha as we projected. There is definitely sufficient evidence, more than enough sufficient evidence, to support the claim that most medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped or dismissed. That is definitely the case. So we're not rejecting the claim that most are dismissed. We're, there's evidence to support the claim that most are dismissed. So hopefully after seeing the second one, uh, uh, it's making a little bit more sense how these um, it's making a little bit more sense how these hypothesis tests are done. I'm going to do another example in the next video. If you feel like you get the hang of it, go ahead and try doing the homework and see if you can get it yourself. And as always, please email me if you have a question.